Today we're talking about the ESTJ personality type. What about this personality type? What are the main characteristics that describe this type? What are the strengths and weaknesses of the ESTJ? And how can we better understand the cognitive function stack? All about that in the next minutes. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and let's dive in. So now let's talk a little bit about the letters that describe the ESTJ personality. But guys, again, as we've discussed in all of the previous videos, um, the letters are not really the true way in which we can understand any personality type. They're more likely to show us a glimpse of where those mental processes are directed and what kind of traits are mingled around in that person's personality type. Um, so in the case of the ESTJ, E stands for extroversion, which simply means that the ESTJ is more likely to draw their energy from the outside world. And that could mean people, it could mean tasks, uh, it can be things that stimulate them from the outside. Then we have S, which stands for sensing. This means that when it comes to perceiving the world and understanding the world, ESTJs prefer focusing on things that um, are more practical, more concrete, and understanding information from a concrete point of view, um, not favoring so much the world of ideas and concepts. Then we have T, which stands for thinking. This means that when making decisions, ESTJs are more biased to focus on things that make sense, on logical aspects, on facts, rather than emotions, values, and subjective things. And lastly, we have J, which stands for judging. This means that when it comes to um, a structure, when it comes to living in a specific framework, ESTJs find it much easier to work in an environment that is structured and well-planned. It doesn't mean necessarily that they're well-organized, although they tend to be in most cases. It just means that for their mental health and for their well-being, they function much better in an environment that is well-structured, clear and very well-planned. Right, and now let's talk about the cognitive functions of the ESTJ personality. Firstly, we have extroverted thinking. This is the dominant function of the ESTJ personality. And if you remember, we talked about this in the ENTJ video specifically. It's a function that is concerned primarily with what works for others. What kind of things can we implement in a logical way, in such a way, in such a fashion, in such a manner, that we can impact and influence other people. Um, an ESTJ is quite likely to try to find logical, practical solutions to a lot of problems, kind of disregarding the feelings of other people. And it doesn't mean that they don't care about those feelings. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. It just means that they're more likely to be interested in what works for them. And they'll be like, well, it will work. They'll be upset, they'll get over it. Um, so this can make them look a little bit bossy. Someone asked me this on Instagram, are they always bossy? Well, yes, they might appear like that. And it is often the case that people perceive them to be bossy. Um, we also find ESTJs in managerial positions uh, in a lot of companies because their capacity to plan and be efficient due to their extroverted thinking really enables them to work well in a structured environment. However, they might have more difficulty relating emotionally to other people People, and this is where their more dominant approach comes from uh, because they care more about practical things, they care more about what works, what is logical, what is efficient, and they might step over other people's feelings, especially if they're not really conscious about this process. So this in turn can lead to them really hurting other people and having difficulties in relationships to, with other people. Then we have introverted sensing. This is a function that focuses on understanding the world, so it's a passive function. Uh, since it is the auxiliary function of the ESTJ personality, it's probably the healthiest one. We've discussed this in, pre in previous videos. Usually the auxiliary function um, is what enables one to navigate better in the real world. It's a function that is well developed, but it's not used obsessively. So what does it mean in the case of the ESTJ? 
Well, um, introverted sensing refers to their ability to look into the past, to look into what has worked in the past, and to kind of implement those things in the present moment. So they like taking lessons learned from the past, reliving their memories, focusing on all of those details, and implementing them right now, right here in the real world. And it can make them a little bit obsessed with routine, with planning, with, a, with living in a very well-structured environment, because because this is something that is suitable for them. And they might favor traditions and things that have worked in the past exactly because introverted sensing is something that comes so naturally to them. Next, we have extroverted intuition. This is the tertiary function of the ESTJ personality. And normally it's not something that they use with ease. It's not something that comes very naturally to them. However, as they grow and mature, they will be a little bit more curious to explore what extroverted intuition is. So they might be something like, hmm, I've been focusing so much on introverted sensing, on plans and structures and more rigid systems, and now I'm curious to explore the world. Now I'm curious to see whether a lot of different things might lead up to. So they might become a little bit more flexible in their approach. They might be uh, better at, you know, being curious and being exploratory in their perception of the world and kind of jumping from one thing to another and letting themselves be fueled by what those ideas could bring them. And once an ESTJ can incorporate this extroverted intuition in their perspective, it can really, really help them um, in order to kind of have a more balanced approach in terms of how they understand the world and how they perceive things around them. And lastly, we have introverted feeling. This is the inferior function of the ESTJ personality. And if you remember, we've talked about this in the INFP video or the ENFP video, for example. Introverted feeling is all about what is important to me. What are my values? What are my feelings? What are the things that matter to me on a subjective level? And ESTJs are not so... Um, passionate about using this function. It doesn't come naturally to them at all and they might really neglect this because they think it's unimportant and inefficient. So it might frustrate other people who are in relationships with them, for example, whether that's family, romantic relationships, friendships, because they might have difficulty getting in touch with the emotional aspect of things. Um, but as they grow and mature again, they realize at some point that integrating what is important to them, their values, their emotions in their decision-making process are also really important. So you might find them sometimes getting into the grip of this function and kind of, you know, letting it take control over them in a more chaotic way. And this means that this introverted feeling will manifest in such a way that they will try to withdraw and they might have an existential crisis or they might have an issue with understanding what their morals are because they don't really know how to control it. They're not very familiar with this introverted feeling. And then they kind of detach from everything that is going on. So it is important for the ESTJ to be aware and conscious about this and kind of find a balance between extroverted thinking and introverted feeling. Although this might take a while, it's probably the most difficult function for them to develop, but patience and endurance can take them a long way. Okay, so a couple of you guys have asked me on Instagram, what is the difference between an ENTJ and an ESTJ? I recommend watching my previous video on ENTJ. You will see some discrepancies between uh, various cognitive functions that are different for ENTJ and ESTJ. However, I would like to share an insight that I have here about how these two types are different from each other. Um, and from my perspective, uh, from what I've encountered in the real life, ENTJs often give off a much more mysterious, sarcastic vibe. They're a little bit smoother and more charming in their approach. And one might even perceive them quite sneaky. On the other hand, ESTJs are much more stoic. Uh, they have less of a chaotic vibe. They have less of an interest in exploring creative things. And they're much more structured and can appear even more rigid than an ENTJ to other people. Um, that's why they are not often perceived to be as charming as the ENTJ. Although it's not necessarily the case, but it can be true. Okay, so how about compatibilities? 
Well, when it comes to the ESTJ personality, um, the MBTI theory says that they get along best with other dominant thinking types. So ENTJ, ISTP and INTP. Um, however, my perspective is that a very deep and interesting connection can occur between ESTJs and other personality types who share the same cognitive stack as them. So ISTJ, ENFP and INFP, because they all make use of introverted feeling, extroverted thinking, introverted sensing and extroverted intuition. Um, however, the types that the ESTJ will have most difficulty relating to are INFJ and ENFJ due to the complete opposition of functions and preferences. So thank you guys, thank you a lot for watching again. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and see you next week with another video on another personality type.